time. Um, today we're going to prove the full drag of the room, and now let's get started. So first, let's review what's the full drag of the theorem. It basically says if we have a one-way function f, such that it is one to one and the length of f x is equal to the length of x for every x, then for every probabilistic polynomial time algorithm a, there is an individual function epsilon such that probably over all x and r, a f x r equals to x dot product r is smaller than or equal to one over two plus epsilon n, and where x dot product r is defined to be the inner product of two vectors x and r. So one function basically says for every probabilistic, probabilistic polynomial time algorithm a, there is another individual function epsilon such that for every n, the probability over all x y equals fx, a y equals x prime such that fx prime equals y is smaller than epsilon. So now I will give an overview of the proof. So we would like to prove the overall theorem by continuation. We will first assume that there exists an algorithm A such that the probability over all x and r, a f x r equals x dot product r is greater than or equal to one over two plus epsilon. And then, based on this assumption, we will construct an, another algorithm B which is less than O n square over epsilon square time, such that the probability over x y equals fx, dy equals x prime, such that f x prime equals y is greater or equal to some of b of b of epsilon. And this will violate the definition of our one function for f. So more specifically, we will first show that uh, if our assumption holds, then there is at least an epsilon over two fraction of the x. The probability over fr such that a fx r equals x dot product r is at least one over two plus epsilon over two. And we define this fraction of x to be good. And we'll show that our algorithm B could regenerate those good x from fx into the probability at least 0 0.9. For those three uh, conditions, uh, the last one is what we need to prove the whole back value theorem. And we'll start with those two uh, stronger assumptions and to get some intuition for how we prove this last one. And if we can prove this, then the, the probability of uh, dy equals x prime such that fx prime equals y will be greater than 0 0.9 times the fraction of two uh, x, which is x over two. Let's basically use a big of the opposite and we will convince to write it down. So let's start with how why there is a it's an over two fraction of x that are new. So suppose there, there is fewer than epsilon over two fraction of x, which the probability is smaller or equal to uh, one over two plus epsilon over two, then the overall probability over all x and r, f x r equals x dot product, uh, dot product r is gonna be smaller or equal to one minus epsilon over two plus uh, by one over two plus epsilon over two, which corresponds to the that portion of this x, and then plus epsilon over two uh, uh, multiply one, which is less we can get from u x, and this is equal to one over two plus three over four epsilon minus one over four epsilon square, which is smaller than one over two plus square, and this is contradicts with our assumption that this probability should be greater than one over two plus epsilon. So we have proved that there are at least epsilon over two factor of x that are new. Okay, now we will start with this assumption, which is the probability over all r, a f x r equals x dot product of r is equal to one. So we first define e i to be an n bit string such that the i state or the j state of e i is equal, equal to one if and only if i is equal to zero. So note that a f x e i is now equals to x dot product e i which gives the aspect of x. So our algorithm B will compute a f x e i for all i from one to n, and hence we generate all the state of x from f x. This uh, probability from f x. So now, let's come to the second condition, which is that the probability over r, such that a f x r equals x dot plus r is greater 
in, in uh, 0 0.9. And in this case, if we use the same method, the probability to recover one bit of x is 0 0.9, which is not good enough for us to generate the entire x to probably to the oracle greater than or equal to 0 0.9. So to achieve that, we need the uh, probability to recover one bit of x to be greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 to the power 10 n. So we will do some randomness cover generator. Know that x dot product ei is equal to x dot product r, x r, x dot product the x r of r and ei for any i of r, for any m base frame r. So we will randomly choose uh, m r, and m base string r, and for each one of them, we define that ej equals to a f x r j, and a j prime equals to a f x r j x r e i. And then, for both cases, we have a probability greater than or equal to 0 0.9. And then use union bound, we have dj equals, uh, dj x r dj prime equals to x dot product e i, which probably is greater than 0 0.8. And we have used union bound itself just to actually multiply those two probability because rj and rj actual ei are not independent. And now with, um, with that probability, let's further define yj to another random variable, uh, which equals to one if dj actual dj prime equals to x dot multiply uh, dot product ei, and otherwise yj equals to zero. So we define y to be the summation of yj over all j from 1 to n. And based on the probability we have before, we know that the expectation of y is 0 0.10. And the variance of y are just the summation of variance of each yj, which is time times 0 0.10. So if we take the majority of our um, dj x or dj prime, then we uh, get the wrong prediction of x rate of x if and only if the, if, and only if the uh, random variable y is smaller than 1 over 2x. And this probability is smaller or equal to the probability of absolute value of y minus dy is greater than or equal to 0 0.3x. And by change that inequality, we know this is smaller than the variance of y over the square of 0.3m, which is just 16 over 9m. And choosing m equals to 10 to 10, then this probability is less than 10, or 1 over 10 n, which means we can, if we take the majority of dj, x or dj prime, the probability of it not being, not equaling to x dot product ei is less than 1 over 10 n. And so basically we can recover the S state of x with probably greater or greater than or equal to one, minus one over 10 n. We do this procedure for every i from one to n. We can recover the entire x at least 90% of the x. And now it will come time to put this to prove to the last one. Hello everyone, I'm Tsai. I will continue the proof of golden rash 11 theorem. So here is uh, Last case when the probability of a f x r equals x dot part r is greater than one over two plus f one over two. So we wish to apply the same method as we have so far. And the first step is is the same. We choose m strings r one to r n randomly, and for each j we guess x dot part r j by j j, and we guess x dot part r j x or the i by j prime. And the probability here is basically re, uh, replacing the 0.9 to uh, with 1 over 2 plus f over 2 here and here. Uh, by the union bound, we have the probability of dj x or dj prime equals x dopper di is greater than epsilon. However, because epsilon is, is, is not necessarily greater than 1 over 2, then it makes just no sense to take a majority. So, so to, if we would like to take the majority, we would need the pro probability of to be actually greater than one over two. The simplest way of doing that is assuming that we know x dot product rj, then we could 
then we only need to get the uh, x proper rj x y the i by the j prime. So the probability will be eventually greater than 1 over 2 plus epsilon over 2 if we actually know x proper rj and we could continuously uh, apply the Chebyshev bound and reduce the error rate and ultimately guess x with confidence with uh, 90%. But how could we do, how could we do that? Uh, I mean, uh, we could do that by massive guessing, but we are not non-determinist uh, Turing machine, so we can only enumerate all possible answers. So the first step is do the same is we choose n strings, R1 to Rn randomly, and basically we enumerate every possible answer to W. So for every W which is empty string, we assume it's the answer for x over rj, and we generate x prime using the Chebyshev bound. And every time mm -hmm. if f, we verify it by f, if fx prime equals fx, we output x prime and out. If not, we move to the next uh, answer, w. So this algorithm is correct because one of the w is correct, and for that w, uh, we have more than 90 chance to uh, regenerate correct x. So, however, this algorithm actually takes exponential time because the answer w is polynomial long, so it takes exponential time to basically integrate <coughs> all of them. Uh, here we demonstrate a way that we will need to guess a string of a length lo or log m, but we will actually know the aj, which is the x for the rj. So we basically construct the RJ in a new way. So the first first step, we choose k such that k is the smallest integer that m is less than or equal to two to the power of k minus one. And we choose k strings, s1, s2 to sk, independently at random. So sk are m bit zero one strings. And for second step, we construct RJ, which is sum of ST, well, T belongs to TJ. Well, the set TJ is defined here, which is uh, the set of index of uh, the binary representation of J. We claim that the RJ construct this way is pairwise independent. So, and know that if we construct RJ in this way, we can actually calculate DJ, the X over rj by the sum of x over st where t belongs to tj. So if we actually, so if we want to know x over rj, we only need to guess the answer for x over st, which is only a length, which is only length uh, log n. So for the first search step, we, uh, we enumerate all possible answers for x over st. For every w, we assume it's correct, and then we take the majority of dj x y dj prime to generate f bit of uh, x. So dj is calculated by w accordingly, assuming w is correct, and dj prime is a f x r j x y e i. And for every w, we generate a x prime, and we verify it by f x. If fx prime is close to uh, fx, we output it. If not, we turn to the next w. And now we verify that taking majority still works is correct. So we define a series of random variable rj. We define rj to be one if afx rj x y i is actually equals x over rj x y i and define yj to be zero if otherwise. So because rj are pairwise independent, then yj is also pairwise independent. So we have the expectation of sum yj to be m times the expectation of yj, which is one over two plus f over two. And the variance of sum of yj is also the sum of variance of yj. It's m times 1 over 4 minus s on square over 4. So uh, likewise, we define y to be sum of yj. So 
So if we take the majority, the probability of getting it wrong is equals to the probability of y less than 1 over 2m. It's less than or equal to the probability of, of the absolute value of y minus f expectation of y at greater than 1 over 2 m epsilon. By chef champagne inequality, it's less than or equal to the variance of y uh, divided by the square of 1 over 2 m epsilon. So it's less than or equal to 1 over m epsilon square. If we choose m equals 10 n f divided by epsilon square, then the probability is actually less than 1 over 10 n. So we can generate x, every bit of x with uh, an error rate less than 10 over 1 over 10 n, so we can generate the entire x with confidence 90%. So we prove that um, if we can guess the x dot r with some probability uh, greater than 1 over 2, we can uh, regenerate x, so we can generate x if x is good, which is violate, which violates the definition of function.